Alright, so I got a couple of iPhones here. Here we got the iPhone 13, 13 Pro Max and the all new iPhone 16e. What am I going to do is I'm going to do a Geekbench 6 test. So you can see I have Geekbench 6 right here. It's the latest version. I'll show it's this version right here from the App Store as I currently filming this video. You can see right here, Geekbench 6. Um, obviously because this one just came out, it's just gonna show iPhone 17 comma 5 which is the internal model number. I'm on 18.3.1 which is the second version that this one gets and again because this one is still new it shows ARM at 4.04 GHz. This thing has an A18 chip just the regular A18 and it has 8 gigs of RAM. For the iPhone 13 Pro Max on the other hand, um, you can see because this one is like a couple of years old, it's just gonna show iPhone 13 Pro Max. Oh yeah, all of these phones are running 18.3.1. In addition, the CPU is A15 Bionic chip. This one is the 6GB. It has an extra GPU core, while this one only has 4GB and one less GPU core. Oh, this would be annoying though. Anyway, here's the iPhone 13, just the regular 13. Um, you can see the gigahertz are pretty much the same because the CPU core is the same but again, one less GPU core and it has 4 gigs of RAM. Here are the battery health. As you can see, the iPhone 13 Pro Max is not doing that good because it has 78%. I got this one back in October 2021 so yeah, it was a launch phone. This one, I got it sometime around December 2022 so it's still has 85% and obviously this one um, I just got it like a couple of days ago. Obviously, it has 100% battery health, but the cycle count is only two. Um, this one probably have like 1,000 at this point. So, um, before I actually start the benchmark, oh, stop that! Stop it! Come on, stop it! Stop! Stop! Hey, shouldn't do that. Anyway, before I actually gonna start the benchmark, I will be adding this because why not it's an iphone se and as you can see um this one is on 15.8.3 like couple of ios behind it has an a9 chip 1.8 gigahertz and it only has two gigs of ram furthermore it has 100 percent battery health because i replaced this battery so um i'll do the benchmark i guess right now oh one more thing all of the battery are at 100 so let's go ahead and i try my best oh Try my best to do it at the same time. So, oh, three, two, and one. Oh, this one got off for a second though. So yeah, uh, let's see who will be finish the benchmark first. Um, I have a feeling that it would be the iPhone 16 E because obviously it's the newest chip. So yeah, uh, let's wait. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering why the screen on the OLED iPhone looks weird while the S is not, pretty much I have night shift on for these three newer iPhones while I don't have it on the SE. So I can see that the progress bar on the 16E is really close to the middle while the SE one is still like a bit halfway. Obviously this chip is really old, it's 10 years old which is crazy to think because this chip was originally introduced on the iPhone 6S. I can't believe that phone is 10 years old but hey it's crazy that this chip is still usable to this day for basic tasks such as web browsing I guess, um, YouTube, social media because obviously those stuff are not really that heavy but I don't think that you can do some gaming on this except maybe like casual gaming such as Subway Surfer I tend to play Subway Surfer on my phone though um, I'm not a heavy gamer I don't play games on my phone pretty much I just usually do all of the casual stuff like texting, web browsing um, social media, YouTube, Discord, pretty much all of these tasks are not really that heavy. Okay, since I don't have a thermometer with me, um, I'm just gonna touch see which one feels hot. Um, this one feels not that hot at all actually, it doesn't even feel warm. This one, nope. This one on the other hand, uh, it's a bit warm. Um, it could be the berry, whereas I guess. This one is... Not that warm, but out of all these phones, this one's the coldest, this one's the hottest, but again, this one's not really that hot.
So as you can see, the iPhone 16 E finished it first. Second place will go to the iPhone 13 Pro Max and third place will be the iPhone 13. And as you can see, the iPhone SE is still struggling. It's still at halfway. So that's not really that good for nowadays standards. But hey, good thing this one doesn't feel slow. Um, Obviously, not many people gonna do benchmark every single day. I die when anyway, actually doing it every single day. Um. This is just for fun, pretty much. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering why am I keep tapping the iPhones, um, well, because I pretty much forget to disable the auto lock and I'm just too lazy to change the settings. So yeah, um, every time when the screen goes dim, I just pretty much have to tap the display. Alright, there we go. The result finally showed up. As you can see, the iPhone 16e obviously is going to be the highest because it has the newer chip. As you can see right here, the iPhone 13 Pro Max, you have a decent score. It has 2425 and this one has the 3370 for the single core. On the other hand, the 13 gets 2324 and here you can see the iPhone SE is not doing that good. But when you look at the multi core, 923, 5481, and 5916, these two are not really that huge of, huge of difference. However, when you look at the iPhone 16e, 8078, that is a huge jump. So, yeah, that's the Geekbench 6 benchmark test. So, I hope you guys enjoy watching this video. Um, check it out, my other videos right here. And yeah, goodbye.